the judges have decided the best tattoo of the day goes to Bob. Wow. And you were worried. Oh, I was. Yeah. Congratulations, Bob. You have earned the first spot in the finale. Holy <laughs> shit. Look at you, dude. Oh, shit. <laughs> My vote for the second spot in the finale is Angel. The judges have decided, Angel, you have earned your spot in the finale. Oh my God, yes. Jarrell and Jimmy, one of you will earn the final spot in the finale, and one of you will be packing your machines. Jimmy, you have earned the last spot in the finale. Woo! <laughs> oh my God. This is crazy, guys. We battled it out for so fucking long, and we busted our asses. Yeah. And hard Just work like, pays off. We're fucking here. This is it. Well, let's do it. I mean, Bring let's it do it. Oh, I hate you guys. <laughs> Now the real competition begins. You're going home, Bob. Yeah, with that $100,000. Fuck you, Bob. What up? What's up, everybody? How's it going? Hi, Bob. Hey, Angel. What's up, Jimmy? What's up, baby? How you doing? <laughs> you said I'm going home, and I guess I'm home right now, but so are you. We're all home. We're all home. <laughs> Jimmy, where are you though? That's what that's the real question. I'm on the set of Criminal Minds. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Oh wow, Jimmy. Yeah, I've never seen this one before, Jimmy. This is amazing. Do you wow. turn little What's turn around there, Jimmy? Look at that. Bam! <laughs> <Wow. laughs> this is my apocalypse outfit. I like no. it. I should really be in my tank top, but it's kind of chilly in here. But I don't know. I'm super predictable. You guys don't need to see my belly button to know I'm wearing a crop top. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm not wearing yeah. underpants, and I'm sure you guys could predict that. Yes, very yes. Predict. Like, That's what happens when you live with someone for two months. Well, guys, looks like we're at home instead of the finale. At this point, the Ink Master finale has been canceled. But what's more important right now is that we all band together and do our parts to make sure we're all staying at home so that we can help fight this virus. And uh, hopefully we can all come out better and stronger on the other side of this. Thing. We would definitely much rather be hanging out at the finale right now, but we are staying inside, away from people, so that the entire community can stay safe. So we encourage everyone else to do that too. We're all sitting at home right now. They're sitting in our basements like Jimmy, so. Whose basement am I in, Bob? Uh, I, I don't know, I'll have to check. <laughs> Maybe I'm in your basement. <laughs> come, this come different. <laughs> I'm actually super stoked um, in, in a weird way because I normally never get to just sit at home and draw all day. I usually just draw for the client and then go right to work and then come back home and sleep and do the same thing endlessly. Totally. I, I started up this project um, that basically requires me to like do drawing swaps with all of my artist friends. And so that's been like taking up 100% of my time and it's been really fucking fun. You know, it's been a crazy year for all of us um you know going through the competition and making it to the finale and all that stress so at first i was like this is great a little break um but now as this thing you know progresses and we're getting further and further into it you know i'm ready to start making art again i miss it all right so as everybody knows by now this season is titled turf war we got to represent teams from four different regions of the country prove what we're all about bob and i are from the west and uh it's kind of fun actually doing this from my shop where I kind of do what I do out here. You know, this is where Black and Gray essentially started. And this is where so much other stuff is happening, like up in Portland where Bob is. It's, it's just exciting. I, I love that, you know, this side of the country gets representation. It was really awesome to be part of the season because I was actually able to represent where I'm from and not just myself as an artist, but also like, you know, I was the only one from like the Pacific Northwest. So I also felt like I was representing my region up here as well. For me, it was a good surprise when, you know, we all got into this competition representing our regions and where we were from. And that's super important to me because I'm an East Coast guy through and through. Not only that, but getting to know my team and uh, doing everything that we could to fight because the West Coast, you guys are a strong fucking team. We're kind of the underdogs and uh, that's okay because I'm proud to represent the underdogs. You know, having a team was like, all right, this is gonna be new and interesting, but having Angel on my team and being a veteran, she like kind of like showed me the ropes, you know, throughout the whole thing. It was not an easy journey. First person I recognized was Jason Elliott. And I was like, fuck, this guy's here? Seeing Jason, I was like, oh no, he's gonna take my spot in the finale, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, and that dude can talk so much shit. What state is that? Because I don't know. My bed was next to his. 
<laughs> all you would do as soon as we, you know, as soon as we were trying to decompress from whatever craziness we just went through, Jason would just lay there eating chips and just like talk so much shit. He would whisper things to me. Is that why you had your like iPad playing videos super loud at night? It was my way to get in your head. Oh my god, you asshole. Is this psychological warfare? I was hearing like people screaming and then sound effects and stuff. I'm like, what is going on? Why doesn't Jimmy have headphones? I gotta wake up in three hours. Well, I had I had earplugs. I wasn't even listening to it. I just left it on for you guys. The strategy goes so much deeper than anyone realizes. <laughs> yeah, because that's all it takes in this competition. And you guys know that. It's like one bad night of sleep that affects everything. And I saw that so much with season 11 where people would call home and talk to their families and stuff. And it's like the main thing you have to do is just like focus on the task at hand and try to leave all that at home. It oh. also, if you get the chance, you know, play murder documentaries so Hiram can't sleep. <laughs> I would definitely say I'm a little bit shocked that Kelly didn't make it to the finale. He really had the makings of a finalist. I think it just wasn't his day. Jason was the guy when I first got there, I was like, we're all in trouble. Cause I didn't know Kelly yet. A couple challenges in when I really started to see what that guy was capable of, I was like, man, I hope that I get into the finale with Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> like he all of a sudden just was like, I get it now. I just have to do clean tattoos. The judges were just harping on us every single day. Be cleaner and apply tattoos better like Kelly. Every yeah, day. Yeah, it would always, yeah. It doesn't even matter if you got tattooed the day, you were still prepared to Kelly. Good fucking job, man. Good job, done. Thanks, man. That last episode was insanity. I honestly didn't know if I was gonna nail it or not. Let the fun begin. All right, I have no idea what's going on other than I'm doing a tattoo of this crazy fish. Somehow pull it off. <laughs> and then now I'm in the finale. Oh my God, I'm really fucking happy right now. Congratulations, thank you. When you won the first spot in the finale, Bob, I was honestly like, good, I accomplished something today. Now I just gotta get myself there. And you lucked out, you didn't have to do the Friday the 13th shit. Your fight is not over. To earn one of the two remaining spots in the finale, you must first survive a 13 hour Tattoo Marathon. 13. Oh, glad I'm sitting here safe. Friday the 13th in Ink Master standards? No fucking way, that is a nightmare. Oh my God, that 13 hour day of just nonsense. Just like, I couldn't hear people talking to me. They were saying things and their mouth was moving, but I just, I was like, that was just noises. This is your friendly paramedic coming by to say, I haven't seen you go to the bathroom. I'm worried about your hydrating. So here's a bottle of water here for you. Okay. Please hydrate up, okay? Thank you, sir. Stop drinking water. I got shit to do. The medic comes over and scolds me for not drinking water. I don't even remember that. Like, I was watching it and I was like, what? Yeah. And I gave him all that attitude. I was like, I'm fucking drinking water. And I was like, who am I? What was I? I've never been through anything like that. Holding your eyes open, concentrating for 13 hours, it's a lot more difficult than I think people realize, even if you're doing small tattoos. They're like, we're judging it on the amount of times your design was chosen, the drawings of your thing, how many tattoos you do, the quality of your tattoos. Difficult placements. Yeah. Like, if you get a difficult placement, you can't talk them out of it. You know, just fucking go with it. Right here. Your ribs? Yep. Where do you want to put it? Let's keep on the ribs. Okay. Where do you want to put it? Right in my armpit. You're a fucking lunatic. That's what people tell me. That was one hell of a day. <laughs> Angel literally did designs with perfect circles in them. Like a madman. What? I'm good at perfect circles, which ended up working. <laughs> yeah. I think you were trying to trip us up with that design because it had all yeah. those circles. They yeah. were like, ah, oh, this is going to screw somebody over, but it ended up being like the banana peel that you kept slipping on. I didn't think <laughs> fucking five people would walk in and be like, Angel, tattoo this thing, and no one else would have to do it. Congratulations. Thank you. Me and Bob, let's fucking do it. I say this all the time. I think, you know, happy emotions are definitely much stronger than sad emotions. And that one just got me. I was like, I, wow. It was ugly yeah. crying. Absolutely. Dude, I lost my mind. <laughs> when they announced that I made it to the finale, obviously you guys were there and you saw me break down. I put a lot um, on the line. So is Jarrell. We both put in a lot of shit throughout our entire lives just to get to this moment. I'm happy. Thank you. It was a dream. I don't care if you fans say that I'm crying or I'm a crybaby. It was a tears of joy. 
Yeah, you know, those were tears of joy. I have this picture of us three in the hallway. Bob at that point had had time to adjust, like, okay, I'm in the finale. But me and you just looked ruined. Then it's like you get a whole new wave of emotions because now it's like now the real hard work starts. Now you're oh. gonna start preparing for the finale. And that's like, that's a whole different beast in its own. Each of you will be assigned not one, but two what? master <laughs> canvases. Okay. One 25-hour back piece. 25? 25? And one 25-hour chest piece. Oh Are you my fucking God. kidding me? But that is not all. It's a lot of shit already. In addition, you must each also complete a six-hour thigh tattoo at the finale. Oh, what? <gasps> 56 hours of tattooing, the most tattooing ever required by a single artist to earn the title. Jimmy, which style do you choose? American traditional with an expanded color palette. Angel, what style do you choose? I'm gonna go with illustrative black and gray. And finally, Bob, what's it gonna be? Uh, I'm gonna have to go with Biomech. All right, guys, so this is my 25 hour back piece. I really wanted this one to go big, so this is what we did. I love this drawing. It kind of just flowed through me while I was in the design process, and it ended up becoming this really sick metaphor for me in the competition. I always kind of try to think of myself as like a warrior, like I'm fighting kind of through life. What you're looking at here is the struggle of the inner warrior. It's you versus yourself. And so I think that kind of manifested into this drawing. The other thing too is I really wanted to play with weird surrealism, symmetrical stuff. It was a huge risk for me to like, you know, draw this crazy sword straight down the middle of his back, do two faces that are supposed to mirror. Even though you guys have seen my work before, you know, I wanted to do something that is not going to be easy regardless of whether or not it's my style. So getting into tattooing, this thing was fucking crazy. Every single time we started tattooing, this guy would shake from the time the clock started to the time I was done. He would just shiver. And no matter what we did, that was just what I had to deal with. So, you know, it was really me versus myself. I was like, holy shit, I put this crazy task in front of me. I better pull it off. And um, I, I remember looking at this thing, man, and being like, this is it. This is everything, dude. <laughs> This is my uh, 25 hour black and gray illustrative back piece. Ooh, holy shit. I definitely struggled throughout the whole competition with black and gray. Obviously I was in the bottom two of the days we had to do black and gray realism. I really wanted to show that I can not only do realistic aspects, but I can also do illustrative realism within a single subject matter. I had a good idea that, you know, Angel's going to do some type of woman or female figure. So I wanted to definitely confront that challenge head on, as well as add some, you know, mystical or mythological like embellishment on this uh, piece by like giving her wings, giving her four wings and talons and stuff. So the harpy in mythology is uh, the messenger that bestows punishment upon like evildoers and carries their bodies to Hades. I wanted to also, you know, throw in elements into this design to break it apart. Uh, you know, I have the lightning that's going through the whole image signifying she's in the middle of a storm and she's either about to take off or about to come down to land. And I I wanted to like make sure there was a heavy amount of black in this just to show how dark the sky is. And I also wanted to show texture within the feathers. All of the barbs that compose a feather, they are actually like mag drags. So they're individually spaced out lines of a shader. I also use rotaries and coils on this tattoo. I wanted to show that I'm not only diverse in my artwork, but also diverse in like the craftsmanship of these tattoos. This is what I created in 25 hours, and I'm super stoked on what I created here. So this is my back piece. Ooh. From the minute that I got home and all the stress and trying to get back to normal life, it was definitely overwhelming. So I just wanted to like try to tell my story a little bit. And uh, with everything that I've been through with drug addiction and, um, you know, just kind of like temptation and what that leads to. So I wanted to have this big snake kind of wrapping in and out of uh, like a reaper's cloak and kind of playing with the top of the scythe. And, you know, I went pretty fancy on the side there with like the wood grain. But yeah, I just wanted to play with like a lot of heavy contrast, make sure all my blacks were solid as hell, but also having a little bit of like elegance and somewhat realism with like the face and especially the hand, you know, and kind of playing with the two different styles. But I also wanted to just do something that was just bold as hell, because that's what I do. 
you know, and make sure that like it was readable from that stage. All right, let's look at the chest pieces. This is my 25 hour biomechanical chest piece, I guess, but I definitely went a little bit bigger than the chest. There's a lot of areas that really suck to get tattooed, like the ribs and the armpit and the collarbone and the sternum and the neck. You know, the most frontal area it has more ridges and curves and bones that come closer to the edge of the skin. It also has more conjunctions of muscle groupings, a lot of areas where you can play with the form and the shape so that it can give a different illusion than what you uh, would normally see when you look at the front of a person. Those hook pieces that come up near his armpits, the very tips of them go and form a arc all the way down to those bits that are coming across his ribs. But when he opens his armpits up, they're actually hooked out and it just shows that like skin folds and it bends and it moves and it gives another level of depth. Um, I also wanted to show, you know, light sourcing in here. I wanted to show like biomechanical art isn't really reality. It's limitless. So I wanted to just show my take on it, which is, you know, this futuristic alien S endoskeleton that's within him. And I'm really happy with this, you know, cohesive piece that I've created here. So I wanted to make sure that I did biomech on a big scale. Now, this is my 25 hour biomech piece. I will say this, I learned almost everything I know about biomech from Bob. People think of me and they think of black and gray realism specifically. My theory was I can't think of anything further from realism or black and gray than just like full color crazy biomech. One of my favorite color palettes is, you know, the blues with the oranges and yellows. And so I wanted it to kind of look like this guy is sort of glowing from inside. Um, I wanted to have a bunch of little pieces that make it look mechanical, pieces that look almost like bones. Uh, it's a full coverage art style. And, you know, I'm looking at it, I'm like, man, I want to take it over his collarbones. I want to connect it over to his arm. I want to do this. I want to do that, you know, and I just constantly felt like I just wanted to expand it and do more, but I wanted people to see it and be like, oh, what, Angel did that? <laughs> you know, that was my main goal with it. This is an area that really fucking hurts to tattoo, especially tattooing right over his nipples and stuff like that, going into the armpits. You know, this was as much a battle for me as it was for this guy. So yeah, we really got in there and, and made it crazy. I wanted to go like, not quite wall to wall, but as close to wall to wall color as I, you know, could like feasibly do within the time frame. I was like, I'm just gonna blast this entire background with, with gold and yellow, and it's just, it's gonna be heavy and it's gonna be intense, and um, that's what what I think I did here. Getting home from you know filming season 13, getting ready to do the finale stuff. I just had this heavy feeling, and I even had like a dream about being lit on fire. And I just thought about how how cool it would be to try to turn that image into one of my finale pieces. People, you know, make these perceptions about you based on a very small thing that they might see on the internet or on TV. Just the way in society that we kind of like make these blind judgments about each other. And I thought it was important for me to kind of like speak to that. You know, so that's what I did with this piece. The centerpiece, it has like a burning witch figure. And you got two very traditional girl heads on the sides by the ribs that have daggers coming out of their mouths because they're speaking blindly. You know, they're blindfolded and they're saying things based on what little they might actually know about somebody. You know, they're stabbing a sacred heart that's, you know, lighting the witch on fire. And then you have these serpents that are kind of like doing the, the devil's bidding. They're kind of coming up over their shoulders, whispering in their ears. They kind of frame the whole piece in. And then on top, obviously, you have a devil head with a third nail coming through his mouth that the witch is actually tied to. So I wanted to go with something super intricate. It was my style. And I knew you guys were gonna go balls to the wall with probably biomech and I was saving the biomech for my six hour. So if I was gonna do traditional with a big piece, I wanted to make sure it was just as intricate and just as complex to do. There was obviously a lot of line work to get done in five hours on the first session. But my guy sat great and he was a champ and I had a lot of fun doing this tattoo. And I feel like it was important for me to do a good tattoo, but also do something that is kind of like a reflection of what I see every day, you know, some artists, make landscapes or whatever, whatever it is that they see every day and what inspires them. I mean, this is the same thing. I see this every day. And so hence, I give you a uh, blind judgment. Well, that was a lot of fun. Thank you guys. David, Jimmy, I wanted to see you do some large scale biomech. Dude, I was so stoked. I wanted to show you guys the drawing. 
everything that I drew, I just felt like it would have made more sense for me to take that on as like a six hour one, even though it's a lot of work for Biomech. Also trying to tie that theme in with like the serpent. You went all Jimmy Snake, didn't you? Yeah, I did. All of them, all of them got like a serpent theme or, or, or like a devil or whatever. I mean, you can my, tattoo it if you want. I didn't fully finish my traditional one, but uh, I was tossed between like two ideas. Honestly, guys, this is, although we're not standing on a stage right now with a bunch of people watching, like it's really nice to see what you guys have done. And I, I'm just so happy to kind of get to this point. Like I could cry. <laughs> I knew that I was up against a fucking giant, you know, going against you two, um, not only as individuals, but you guys are also still a team. And uh, you guys really fucking brought it just like I expected that you would. I mean, Bob, your black and gray thing, that back piece is fucking insane. I know personally how much you, you have struggled in the past with black and gray because, you know, I was kind of your person to lean on for that. Not to toot my own horn or anything, but I can see where you were like, what is Angel gonna think, you know? Dude, it's so hey. good. So good, everything about it, like how solid that you're able to get all those blacks in the background with that negative space, which is great for a cutting out time, but it also brings different contrast and the flow throughout the whole piece and the way that you shaded the wings. Uh, I'm super happy that we all did basically the same like ladies and black and gray backs. It's like Jimmy and I were trying to put our feet in Angel's shoes at the time and be like, what is Angel gonna make and how are we gonna have to compete with Angel? We're gonna have to do it like head on. It was kind of a really even playing field for us to just be like, all right, cool. It's an illustrative girl battle. Jimmy's use of heavy black, he definitely does something that I haven't seen him do throughout this whole competition. It's definitely a drawing style that I haven't seen from Jimmy, you know? You killed it too, Angel. And like, you know, with, with your black and gray back piece, I can definitely relate to that story where it's like, I have to try to beat you guys, but in reality, I just have to try to like beat myself and what I would normally do. So thank you for telling that story. I think it's important. It's so clean and done so beautifully that that story comes to life. You know, you're able to just focus in on what it is and what it means. Super ballsy doing two female faces with hands. Like it's symmetrical, but they have slight changes to each one to show difference. The sword right down the spine, which I would never have done because that's something that you're like, oh, I'm gonna draw a perfect circle on an elbow or something. You know, it's like <laughs> something that people don't do. Hell yeah. And uh, as far as the biomech goes, both of you guys killed that shit too. I'm still so mad I didn't get to do my six hour thing, but I mean, Angel, I mean, those colors, everything is so bright. It's so solid and, and you do so much coverage, bringing it up over the collarbones and everything. I was like really worried about both of you when I said Biomech, because I know it's hard. It's super hard. Like sometimes I'm always questioning myself if I'm doing it right. Nobody's really the Biomech police telling you you're not doing it right, you know? And there's not like a billion people out there doing it right. You know, you showed light sourcing in there and I like that you went big. You like went over the surfaces of the body. You went on the chest, which is like the hardest placement and you accomplished something really cool. I like how both of ours kind of have this weird insect kind of vibe to them. Uh, like if you combine them together, like mine would be the head and yours would be like the body or something. That's super cool. <laughs> And I, even knowing you, knowing your style, that thing surprised the hell out of me. I knew it was gonna be incredible. I knew it was gonna be, you know, crispy, clean, and, and you're gonna have all kinds of crazy colors in there. But the approach you took with the skin breaks coming through and everything, I wasn't quite expecting that. You know, you talk about all the time, you know, carving out pieces of people's skin, creating protrusions and stuff, and having Biomech really like harmonious with the body. And I think that you capture that in a way that is masterful. You know, like I, I can try, but that's something that you gotta just kind of be a master of that style to like really nail it the way you did. And Jimmy, of course, you know, looking at your American traditional chess piece, it looks exactly like I expected it to. I mean, you know, you really show us exactly who you are. And I love that, you know, you actually got in there and told us the story throughout all of it. I think your ability to capture that in a style that doesn't necessarily always have a foreground, middle ground background, the way you did it was, you know, tasteful and, and I really appreciate the fact that you put so much thought into it. Even though I was kind of expecting it, you know, there's still elements of surprise in there for me. Man, like, I was really wanting to see some Jimmy Biomech. Honestly, that was... Well, was I mean, crazy. hey, at least I finished my drawing, you lazy hey, sacks of shit. Come on. <laughs> hey, man. You guys had like fucking eight months. What are you doing? Eight months. I, I have about nine or 10 finished drawings. I just didn't <laughs> want to do any of them. The whole time I was working on mine, I was stressing. 
so hard as to like, oh, what are they going to make? Who's going to do the one on one? You know, what is Jimmy going to make? You know, how is he going to fuck me over? You know, is how is he going to feel? Like, fuck you, Bob. You know, at the, at the end of it, you know. And, and I didn't also, get to. I didn't get to. <laughs> six hours. Fuck. <laughs> and also, I was thinking about Angel, and I was just like, oh man, Angel's tricky because like. She might act like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, but then she's like, just goes in and kills it every single time. You're just like, how did you don't not know what you're doing? She's like, I don't know, and then you're like, yeah, you you know what you're doing. Well, I feel like we were all trying to bend the variables of our own style, pushing our own boundaries, you know, past uh, what we normally do on a daily basis, and it's really awesome to see that we were all at the same level of thinking almost. We all did black and gray tattoos. We all did ladies. But we all have different, completely different looking pieces and they all look amazing. I love that I can definitely see the the fight and the like hunger for this in all of our tattoos, like even in, in our own styles that we're super comfortable in. It, it, it just makes me happy because the whole time I was doing that and I was like, am I crazy? Like, should I tone it back? Am I biting off more than I can chew? But I was like, I feel like they're doing the same thing. So I'm glad that we all fucking brought 150% to this. If I could describe this season, in one word, I would say um, growth. The only word I can, you know, think of is like fulfilling. You know, like this is a, all the after all the stress, after all the losses, the wins, for better or worse. You know, my worst days were like moments where I like learned the most about myself, and yeah, it's it's an incredibly good feeling. I think with everything that's going on in the world right now, I think it's really easy to focus on the losses and all the negativity and, and what everybody is losing during this time. But you also got to think about what you're gaining, you know? And mm -hmm. I think all of us this season, we gained so much personally and artistically. You know, we got better at our crafts. And we learned a lot about ourselves. And it's like, there's no loser in that. The experience or like the challenge, um, I feel like is the word for me. It's like, I came into this completely blank, you know, with no preconception of what it was going to be like. And regardless of how the season ended or how the season went, you know, it was an experience for everybody that was there. It was a life-changing experience for me and for many of the people that were there. Like everybody from the season is my new friend now, new lifelong friend that I've shared an experience with that nobody else can say that they've experienced. And I'm just grateful that I got to experience it. I think grateful is a good word, you know? Great. I think you, I think you just said it, you know? There it is. Yeah. There's Thanks, your Jim. fucking word, man. Find it. So, let me do it again. All you have to say. I'm like, Shh. what am I oh, saying? You can see the vein on her. Talk about how good I did <laughs> in the squishy voice, just to redeem it a little bit. I think Angel should talk in the squishy voice since she hates it so much. I don't know if I would do it just. Come on, Angel. There are no winners and losers here, but you definitely take the cake on the squishy voice. Oh, come on, just say it with me. Let's, do, let's all do it together. <laughs> there it is, Bob. Her, the vein on her forehead is just like... Who, uh, angels? My, it's my just like inner rage. Just. I just want to thank you guys again. You know, I mean, you guys are obviously very tough competitors, and I learned a lot about myself from competing against you guys. And... Um, learned a lot about you guys too and I you know I definitely cherish those relationships and those friendships that we made throughout this entire season and obviously thank you the fans I hope you guys got as much out of the season as we got you know competing in it because I think there's a lot of good things that happened here and uh thank you guys for all your support you two have been such incredible teachers to me and 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 the rest of everybody involved with Think Master I just in spite of everything, I couldn't be more full of of just love and appreciation for everything that's happened and for everybody tuning in right now from home. I, we, we would love to, you know, like do this crazy finale for you guys, but, you know, this is what we got right now. And the fact that, you know, people are supporting it still from their homes, doing the right thing, staying safe is just, it's awesome. I mean, as much as we all wanted this finale to happen, you know, the reality is that the world is more important than than TV. You know, it's more important than us in this small competition. It's, you know, we got to look out for each other globally. Absolutely. I love you guys. <laughs> I love you both so Come much. Come here, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy's staying home. <laughs>